praise God forevermore. It was such an awesome time. Amen. This morning, as you've opened up your heart, I want you to know that the word of God will be coming your way in a very powerful way. Amen? If there is one thing that makes me to trepidate is the fact that God can use anyone. Hallelujah. And that's why irrespective of who may be speaking, even when my children are ministering from the children's church, I always ensure because there's always something to learn. He's only a fool that would think he knows it all. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So this morning, I am keeping an appointment with the children in the children's church. And to bring the word of life to us, please welcome with me my dear son, Pastor Daniel. Barindi. Hallelujah. So let's celebrate him. I'm sure you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please let's have a seat in God's presence. It feels like I've not been here before. <laughs> and it's obviously a very, very rare privilege for pastor to introduce me to you this morning. Um, help me celebrate him this morning. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate pastor. Hallelujah. And of course, I want you to also help me celebrate mom in the house this morning. Hallelujah. And as always, it's a privilege to stand before you this morning to be a blessing um, by sharing the word of the Lord with us this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like us to be together this morning as um, we hear the word of the Lord. This morning, I want to speak to us on something that we need to also confess in our lives as the precious voices as minister to us. And the title of my message this morning is that the rain is coming. The rain is coming. The rain of God's blessings is coming over you in the name of Jesus. Only few people believe. Are we cold this morning? Are we cold? Are we cold? Let's be active and present in the presence of the Lord. Amen is an affirmation of your victory. So when you hear, when it's time for you to say amen, you are affirming that you've got the victory. And that prayer is coming to fulfillment in your life. That is the meaning of amen. So if you are not saying amen, you are not confirming the victory of that prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're in rainy season, of course, as we all know. I'm, I'm sure it must have rained somewhere in your neighborhood today or over the night. And when rain comes, I mean, everywhere becomes cool. Everywhere becomes calm. The flowers grow. The crops grow. You know, except, and everybody is happy, except that in Nigeria, right now, I mean, it's raining, but some of us are not happy. Maybe the farmers are not happy because they can't go to the farm, you know, because of insecurity. And that's part of the challenges that we are facing as a country. And, you know, that's why the Bible says that except the Lord watch over a city, the watchmen watch only in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, the laborers, the builders, they are just stressing for nothing. Hallelujah. So it's only God that can indeed secure us in this country. And I pray he will in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a journey to the book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 20 to 23. It's the scripture of a prophetic word that God spoke to us from during the conference and... Um, it's being re-echoed over and over again. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the peoples shall yet come. 
even the inhabitants of many cities. Can I have an amen? amen? The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself I am going. Hallelujah. Verse 23, verse 22. Many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. And lastly, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, Say, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And God is with you in the name of Jesus. Now let's read our anchor scripture for today's message from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, a very popular scripture that I believe we all know. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go, show yourself to him and I will reign upon the earth. Hallelujah. Then jump to verse 41, and then we'll read to verse 46. Verse 41 to verse 46. And Elijah said to Ahab, please let's read NKJV, please. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel, to top of camel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. 44, we're going to 46. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to her, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black and clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Lastly, for the sake, then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning because of your word that you're about to bring to us. We pray that you minister to us in your own way in the name of Jesus. We open up our heart this morning and we ask that you fill us up with your word in the name of Jesus. Use my tongue, Lord, to minister to your people. Make it like the pen of a ready writer. None of the words that I may have written, but of you to speak to everyone here today. And let every man here be blessed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Now, the prophetic word of the Lord has been coming to us, of course, from the book from during the conference from Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, that we read. And pastor has been doing very great justice to explaining the word to us so that we can understand um, the full dimension of this prophetic word. And that's why I'm here to tell you today that you should believe the word of the Lord and believe his prophet because only then will you see the rain upon your life. Because only then will the blessings of God be appropriated in your life. The rain of God's blessings is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. It's coming upon your business. It's coming upon your family in the name of Jesus. And of course, God's divine direction and connection is coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your announcement is coming in the name of Jesus such that 10 men, 100 men will be looking forward to seeing you because you are the only one that can service them. You are the only one that can deliver their service. And that the Lord will do this in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Say to your neighbor, get your raincoat. Get your umbrella. Because you're about to be soaked in the abundance of God's word. Hallelujah. As pastor started last week, he began to delve into the four dimensions which is embedded in this word of prophecy. And the first one he's talked about was the dimension of random growth. And this means that all classes of people from different cities, different ethnic groups, they are going to be coming to your aid in the name of Jesus. They are going to be coming to your rescue in the name of Jesus. And they are going to be filling this house in the mighty name of Jesus. They are coming to patronize your business in the name of Jesus. They will be in rooms speaking in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, have you been in situations where you want to do an event and then 
people are coming to you and saying, I will do this for you. I will buy this for you. I will give this for you to you. I will supply this to you free. And then before you know it, everything came together and you didn't even have to spend your own resources to do the event. That is what God is able to do. So when we say the reign of God's blessings is coming, that is what God is able to do. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 4 to 5, let's look at Isaiah chapter 60, verse 4 to 5 in NKJV translation. Lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Amen. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy. Are we reading together? You don't want your heart to swell with joy? I thought you should shout a big amen. amen. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. And in verse 6, the multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. The reign of God's blessings is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. The prophetic word of the Lord is coming to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. And let's delve into our anchor scripture for today, which is from 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 1. Prior to this chapter, prior to 1 Kings chapter 18, in the preceding verses, particularly in verse 17, we see that there had been droughts in the land. There had been no rain for about three and a half years. There had been scarcity of food. There had been hunger. There was agitation in the land. There's food shortage in the land. Hallelujah. But it happened because God spoke the word to his servant. Or through his servant, he declared that there's not going to be rain. And of course, because God's word cannot return to him void, whether it's a prophecy to bring blessing or it's a prophecy to bring destruction. Hallelujah. God's word cannot go back to him void. So God's word became fulfilled. And for three and a half years, there was drought. There was scarcity. There was food shortage everywhere in the land. And I think it's similar to what we're experiencing in Nigeria today. Ours may not probably be as a result of prophecy, but we are seeing a similar situation where everything is expensive. There is hunger, there is agitation in the land. But I'm here to say to you today that God's reign is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. So what I learned as I began to study uh, chapter eight of First Kings, chapter eighteen of First Kings, I had to go back and look at the story and the and the events that preceded that chapter 18. So I went to chapter 17. And I'd like you to put on the screen for me, First Kings chapter 17, verse 1, starting from verse 1. We are going to be reading all the way to verse 6. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. Let's go. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, verse 3, we are going to verse 6, let's be fast please. Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith. Notice that word hide. By the brook Cherith which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Verse 5. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith which flows into the Jordan. Verse 6. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. Hallelujah. Please leave this verse 6 on the screen as, I, as we talk. God made the ravens to feed Elijah. You know why? There was scarcity, there was hunger in the land. But why did God make the ravens to feed Elijah? Because God's servant cannot go hungry. A man of God, a man who trusts God, who puts his hope in the Lord cannot go hungry. No matter the situation in the land, no matter the scarcity, a man who trusts God is not going to go hungry. And God sent the ravens to feed Elijah. And when the ravens finished their job in verse 8, the widow of Zarephath took over. 
Why? Because the servant of God cannot just go hungry. In verse 8, let's look at verse 8. Please put it on the screen, verse 8. The widow of Zarephath took over from where the ravens finished their job. Hallelujah. And of course, they continue to feed the servant of the Lord in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the hunger that was in the land. And that's why I'm confident to tell you today. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 34, verse 10, it said, the young lion may lack or suffer, but those who put their trust in the Lord will not lack any anything good. Hallelujah. So if you are trusting in the Lord, if you are putting your trust, you have faith in him. You believe that your consolidation is powered by your faith and the faithfulness of God over your life, then I can assure you that you will not go hungry no matter what the season might look like. I can assure you that you will not lack no matter what the season might look like. Hallelujah. This is why I, I want to assure you that your consolidation is coming because the word of the Lord has spoken it and God's reign of blessing is coming upon your life in the name of Jesus. Psalm chapter 84 verse 11. Let's look at Psalm 84 verse 11. Let's put it on the screen please. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Verse 12. Verse 12, please. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Hallelujah. If you trust in the Lord, if you know that your consolidation is powered by your faith and God's faithfulness and your faithfulness, then I can assure you that God will not withhold anything good from you. God made sure that his servant found grace and favor no, despite the hardship that was happening in the land. He made sure that his servant found favor. And that's why I'm saying to you, this season you will find favor. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will open to you the treasures from heaven to give you rain in your season in the mighty name of Jesus. Secondly, I learned in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2 and 3, I learned an unquestionable obedience in the life of God's servant Elijah. Unquestionable obedience. God asked him to go and hide. And he went, he obeyed. He went to hide himself. Looking at this scripture, it's a con contrast between Lot with Elijah and, and Lot. When the angels were about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, they told him, go to the mountains. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Please, can I, can I go to the village that is nearby, to the village in the valley? And the angels said, okay, go to the village nearby in the village in the valley. And he went there. But he got there, he wasn't satisfied. And he decided to go into the cave. He wasn't, as, he wasn't obedient to the instructions of the Lord, but Elijah was obedient. He went to heed himself. And I believe that's why God blessed him and made sure that in the season of hunger, he was sustained. Hallelujah. Your sustenance is embedded in the obedience of God's word. Your sustenance in these challenging times, in this season, is embedded in the obedience of God's instruction and his prophecies to you. Our obedience to the strategic leading of God is a determinant to whether we experience the reign of God's blessings. Hallelujah. The reign of God's blessings is coming to you. It is assured. The consolidation is coming. But you must be obedient to his strategic leading. In my office, I tell my people, I tell my team members, I say, look, in this kind of times, we have to be careful the kind of business we undertake. We have to be careful the kind of projects we go into because in this season, if you make mistake, you will lose money. The currency is losing, losing value by the day. If you make mistakes, you will lose and it may even affect your integrity along the way. And that's why it's important that you are careful the kind of things you do. You have to be strategic. You have to make sure you are hearing God accurately so that you know what to do part time. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 19, verse chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Let's look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. 20. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Reverse the scripture. If you are not willing and you are disobedient, you may not eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Maybe not physical sword, but maybe hunger sword. Because you are not listening, you are not hearkening to the voice of the Lord. Imagine Elijah had argued with the Lord and said, ah, why do I have to go and hide now? Can't I stay in my house? The raven can come to my house. Maybe he would have died on, of hunger. But he listened to the voice of the Lord. In the midst of, in the midst of very tight, I mean, very, uh, uh, in the midst of the high tension and insecurity in Nigeria, I remember a lady who got an offer to work in one of the states in the northeast where insecurity was so, you know, was so tense and so strong. Hallelujah. She went, but today she's, she's living fine. She's okay. She's married. She's blessed. You know, she hearkened to the voice of the Lord according to her. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm saying to you that if you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord and you take decisions of your, on your own, you may be turning your own clock anti-clockwise. If you are not listening and obeying the word of the Lord, you may, be, you may end up turning your own clock of life anti-clockwise. So it's important that you seek the face of God. You seek the direction of God. You seek the guidance of God concerning the prophecies that he has spoken over your life. And as we walk in obedience, may we experience the fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. As I continue in 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 2 to 4, I believe God also told the prophet to go and hide so that because the land, the time is very sensitive. It's not a time to begin to display and say that, oh, me, I'm blessed, I'm, I'm eating, you know, because I'm God's servant. No, 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 it's a sensitive time. Everybody's going through challenges in one degree or the other. It's not a time to begin to show off and display. Yes, you can testify to God's goodness and let your testimony point to God's goodness and mercy over your life rather than to be a show off. Hallelujah. That is one of the reasons why I believe God told his servant to go and hide. Don't worry, just hide yourself. I'll feed you. Apart from the fact that he needed to hide from Ahab. Hallelujah. Just say, go and hide. I will feed you where you are. And I'm saying to us this morning that I wish our government can also, you know, be sensitive to the plight and the challenges of the times rather than borrowing to live and spread on frivolous things. And the same lesson is coming to us today. Rather than showing off and intending to flaunt God's blessings over your life and leading to the depression of somebody else around you, you need to be careful and sensitive to the plight of those around you. It's not a time to do things because you want to do it as a show off. If times are tough and you need to adjust, please adjust. Pastor told us that about two weeks ago. If you need to adjust, please adjust. When the abundance comes, you will live in that abundance. Hallelujah. Is it to, am I saying that we should not live in our own personal comfort within the means of what you can afford? No. Live in your comfort within the means of what you can afford. But do not borrow to impress. Do not borrow to show off. Do not borrow because you need to keep up standard. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 and 13. But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you can wound somebody else with conscience because not everybody is as strong spiritually as you are. Your actions and attitude can wound somebody's conscience. You sin against Christ when you do that. Verse 13. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat again lest I make my brother stumble. Shout hallelujah. Shout a bigger hallelujah. So the gist of this particular point is that in this kind of times, as much as possible, God, God is blessing you. God is raining his blessing upon your life. You need to lay low. You need to lay low. It's not a time to show off because there are other people whose rain hasn't come yet, and they're around you. So if your own rain has come and it's still falling, don't forget, somebody's rain hasn't come, but his own rain is also going to come. Hallelujah. And I pray we'll all experience God's rain upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's continue from, verse, from chapter 18 of 1 Kings. 
chapter 18, verse 1. So we've established that the reign of abundance came after three and a half years of drought, three and a half years of suffering, three and a half years of waiting. And the Bible says in, chapter, in verse 1, it says, After many days the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show yourself to Ahab, I will send rain upon the earth. Hallelujah. God had told Elijah what he was about to do. He had told Elijah that rain is coming. I'm going to make sure rain fall. This drought is going to end. This suffering is going to end. But something needed to be done before the rain came. And that was the purging of the land. The land needed to be purged. Some people had to die. Some people needed to die. At a certain time in our country, a president had to die for certain things to happen in our country. So maybe some people still need to die for certain things to happen in our country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure you didn't really hear that. But as I was saying, some people needed to die in the land. There had to be some purging in the land for God's reign to come. And the same way in our lives, there are certain things that had to be done in our lives. There are some purges that need to happen in our own lives as well for God's reign and blessings to come. There are some fallow grounds that we need to break up. There are some cleansing that needs to happen for God's blessings to come upon our lives. There are some growing up that some of us need to do for God's blessings to come upon our lives. Say to your neighbor, there's some growing up you need to do. But because God is a God of justice, our God is a just God, he will give you a chance, he will give you an opportunity for you to be redeemed, for us to be redeemed and come back to the knowledge of his saving grace. Because of that, Elijah organized a contest. Elijah organized the contest and the Bible called it the contest on Mount Camel. The contest on Mount Camel. And it was a contest to show the power of God in comparison with the Baal that the God of Baal, that people were worshipping at the time. And of course, if you want to understand and know the context, you have to go to uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 2. You read all the way to verse 40 thereabout. You see the context and everything that happened. And after the context failed, Elijah asked that all the prophets of Baal should be gathered. And they gathered all the prophets and killed, they executed all of the prophets of Baal. Hallelujah. Because they had been causing distractions to God's people. And that's why some purging needed to happen for God's reign and blessing to come upon the earth. Let's look at this in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38. Verse 38 to verse 40. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38 to verse 40. Technology, are we together? 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse 38 to 40. Okay, I'll read it here. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it leaked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord is God. When they saw the miracle of God, they fell on their faces and acknowledged the goodness of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophet of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook in Kishon and executed them there. He killed all of them. It was after this purging had taken place. It was after all of this cleansing had taken, had taken place. Then God's blessings came. The distraction stopped. Hallelujah. That was when God said, now you guys are ready to be blessed. You guys are ready for your suffering to, this, to stop. Same way God has been speaking to us in the book of Zechariah chapter 8. Verse 20 to 23, the prophecy of God has come forth in our lives. But for God's prophecies to be fulfilled, there has to be some purging. There has to be some cleansing. We have to break up, we have to break up our fallow ground. Or some unworthy things has to leave our lives. Hallelujah. Some filthiness has to leave. So if you are the type of person that you've got people, you've got different kind of, I mean, different pastors and prophets speaking to you at different times, it's important that you begin to adjust because God wants to be the only influential person in your life. God wants to be the only person speaking to you and you are obeying. Hallelujah. It is only then God's reign of blessings can come upon you. Hallelujah. I want us to read from the book of Ezra chapter 6. 
Ezra chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. We're going to read it in NLT. Ezra chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile and by the others in the land who had turned from their corrupt practices to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Verse 22. Then they celebrated a festival of unleavened bread for seven days. There was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable to them so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel. Hallelujah. The distractions needed to stop before they found favor in the presence of the king of Assyria. So in your life, distractions had to stop. Distractions have to stop for God to turn the favor of the heart of men onto you. Hallelujah. If you want to enjoy the reign of God's blessings, you have to break yourself free of the things that are distracting you, that are distracting your life, distracting your journey, distracting God's attention in your life. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 30 verse, verse 12. I'll do Amplified Classic here. Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 12. There is a class of people who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not washed from their own fields. Some of us are righteous in our eyes. We think we are doing the best, but in the sight of God, we are full of fields. And that is why it is important that we ask God to cleanse us and purge us if we really want to experience the abundance of God's blessings. If we really want to appropriate the prophetic word of God in our lives. If we really want to experience the reign of God's blessings and goodness. It is important that we purge ourselves and cleanse ourselves of our righteousness in our own eyes. Of our filth and everything that has made us to forget God or to be distracted from his presence. I want us to read 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 in Amplified Classic. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 in Amplified Classic. Hallelujah. Therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles the body and spirit and bring our consecration to completeness in referential fear of God. Hallelujah. God is saying we need to cleanse ourselves. We need to cleanse ourselves if we want to experience the blessing of God. Now, what is this blessing that God has spoken? Let's go to the preceding chapter from, I think from verse 16, there are about the last three chapters of chapter, chapter 6. The last three verses of chapter 6. Please go to the preceding chapter in verse, yeah. What agreement can there be between between a temple of God and idols, for we are the temple of the living God. Even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them, and will walk in and with them and among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. So some came out from among unbelievers and separate, severe yourself from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing, then I will receive you kindly and entreat you with favor. If you are still allowing distraction, you may not find favor in the sight of the Lord. If you are still keeping distractions and allow things to distract you, you may not find favor. He says, and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is only when you cleanse yourself of filth, of uncleanness, unworthiness, unrighteous things. That is when you can experience this God's blessings. That is when the, prof the, prof the promises of God and his prophecies can come to pass in our lives. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. Now let's jump to 1 Kings 18, verse 41. Chapter 18 from verse 41. Technology, are we together? NKJV, please. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat, and drink. I believe there's been fasting going on. Hallelujah. Go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. 
there is the sound of abundance of rain. Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain. Ask your neighbor, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? Are you hearing the sound of lack? Are you hearing the sound of economic challenges? Or you are hearing the sound of abundance of rain? Are you hearing the sound of rumor? Are you hearing the, the, the statistics that NBCS keeps churning out per time? Are you hearing the value of dollar going up and down? Or you are hearing the sound that God has got the cattle upon a thousand hills? Are you hearing the sound that God has got you covered? What sound are you hearing? Is your spirit man accurate to perceive and to get in accuracy what the heaven is saying to you? Are you understanding? Are you hearing the sound of God's prophecies? Or you are hearing the lack that is around you? Or you are hearing the challenges and problems that you are going through. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? What are you hearing, people of God? Hallelujah. Are you here today? You are hearing the sound of barrenness? You are hearing that there's quietness around you, no child? You should be hearing the sound of your children playing around you. You should be hearing the sound of your children scattering your house. You should be hearing the sound of many children around you. Because the Bible says your quiver will be full of them. Hallelujah. You should be hearing the sound of the abundance of rain. Are you hearing the sound of rumor that the, uh, uh, the promotional exam that all of you did, there's mass failure? Or you are hearing the sound that somebody passed and that person was you? Hallelujah. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? I want you to sing this song with me. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am free. His report says, I am free. His report says, I am free. His report says, victory. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the sound of victory? Or you are hearing the sound of the challenges around you? Whose report are you going to believe? The report of the statistics this government is churning out? The report of the, of the fluctuation of the dollar? The report of, of, of the inflation in the market? The report of how tomato is expensive? Or you are going to report, you are going to believe the report of the Lord that says there is sound of abundance of rain coming upon your life. And you will experience this sound in the name of Jesus. In 1 Kings chapter 42, again, let's go to verse 42 to 44. Verse 42 to 44, we are going to read it together. Technology help us. So he went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down and faced the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up, look towards the sea. So he went and looked and said, there is what? Nothing. Nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Verse 45. Verse 45, please. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was heavy rain. Hallelujah. You know the things I see here very strongly? I see faith. I see strong faith. I see ability not to give up despite what was going on. God has spoken his word, but Elijah needed to wait. So I also see staying power. He needed to wait. He told his servant, go up seven times. God has told him in, in verse 1, he said, I'm about to rain on the earth. Hallelujah. The drought is about to end. But here, the first time, after all the prayers, because he said after all the cleansing, after all the purging, after he had killed the people, the, the, the people that were distracting God's people, after all of those had happened, 
Elijah still needed to exercise staying power. Elijah still needed to demonstrate faith in God. He told his servant, go up the first time. The servant came, I can't see anything. Go up the second time, I still cannot see nothing. Go up the third time, I still cannot see Jack. Go up the fifth time, go up the sixth time, until the seventh time. Hallelujah. I see patience in the life of Elijah. God has spoken his word to you. There is the waiting time. You need to develop your staying power as well. He has spoken to us that 10 men will hold our skirt, asking you, where is your God? God is saying to us, there is a time to wait for it to happen. He has spoken his word. His word is here and amen. But there is a staying power that you need for the prophecy of God to come to pass. You need endurance. You need perseverance. Elijah needed to persevere. He didn't doubt God after the first or the second time. He said, ah, God, but you said there's going to be rain now. Why do I have to keep checking and checking? He was there. The Bible says he stood on the mount. He went to the top of the mountain, put his head between his knees. I want to believe that he was praying. He must have been praying and saying, God, you have spoken your word. Let it come to fulfillment. But he had to endure the waiting time. He had to persevere. I see that Elijah was expectant. He was expecting God's word to come to fulfillment. He was expecting the miracle. Are you expectant? God's word has gone ahead of us. Pastor is doing his best to explain it, to ground it further in us. Are you expectant of God's fulfillment of his word? Are you expectant? In sales and marketing, there's a part of the training that says, you, when you go in for a meeting, you must expect that you will have the sale. You must expect that you will close the deal. So there must be an expectation on your own part as well. If you want God's fulfillment to come upon your life. If you want the rain of God's blessings to come upon your life. I see inspiration by little victory. Elijah was inspired by the little hand that looked like, a, by the cloud that looked like little hand. That was a little victory. But he was inspired by that. And he told Ahab, look, he told his servant, look, go and tell Ahab, we need to go. We need to move because the rain is coming. He was inspired by little victory. He celebrated the little victory. I'm sure he must have said, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The rain is coming. And that was why he stood up to his feet and said, we've got to go because the rain is coming. Hallelujah. Despite the fact that the cloud wasn't so dark. The cloud wasn't so dark. It was just a small cloud that looked like the hand of a man. Little victory. You need to celebrate the little victories God gives you. And I want to tell you, brethren, little victories are victories from God. They might be small in your eyes, but they are victories from God. You are expecting God to give you a job in CBN, but he gave you a job in a small organization. It's God's little victory. It's God's victory for you because you can't even get yourself that job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Little victories, they are victories from God. And I could see the power of positivity. Hallelujah. You know, this particular passage of this story really inspired me so much because God has spoken his word. But Elijah needed to exercise staying power. For seven times he kept telling his servant, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Hallelujah. Last week, pastor told us that very soon, by the grace of God, by the inspiration of the Lord, as his prophecy came, that we're going to be having services with French interpretation. Hallelujah. So imagine pastor comes next Sunday and says, God said we should start. Start. And in your mind, you are wondering where are the people that were speaking French to? First month, second month, we keep going. Third month, we keep going. Fifth month, we keep going. Seventh month, maybe one year, maybe two years, maybe three years. And then somebody just showed up one day. Brethren, that is what it takes to appropriate the prophecy of God. You've got to stay on it. You've got to stay on it. You've got to stay on it. You've got to demonstrate all of those points that Elijah demonstrated and exercise your staying power. Shout hallelujah. As I close this morning, you know why I'm confident that God is going to visit you personally? You know why I'm confident that his reign is coming upon you in the exact area and place where you need it? You know why I'm confident that he knows the exact pain and trouble and stuff that you're going through? You know why I'm so confident? Let me read to you in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 25. Luke chapter 4 verse 25. Please put it on the screen for us. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. 
There were plenty in the whole land as they are. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land, but to none of them, among the plenty, the thousands, the hundreds, the millions, to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. Hallelujah. If you read that passage of chapter 17, you will see the miracle God did in the life of the widow. God knew that she was experiencing hunger. She had her own problems and challenges. And God needed to meet with her personally and specifically. And at a point came when the child of the widow died and needed the intervention of God's prophet. Hallelujah. God did not send Elijah at the time to every widow in Israel, to this woman in Zarephath, in the local government of Sidon, so that the woman's problem and miracle can locate her. Hallelujah. That's where I know God knows your name. He knows what you're going through. He knows the pain you're going through. In specific terms, he understands it. And I know that his reign of blessing is coming upon you today. In the name of Jesus. Another evidence that I have to share with you that God knows you personally and knows your name is in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 11, we see what God did in the life of Apostle Paul. When Apostle Paul was first encountered, Acts chapter 9 verse 11. Acts chapter 9 verse 11. The Bible said is God spoke to Ananias. He said, arise and go to the street called Straight. Inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. There is you. God knows your name. He knows where you came from. And he's ready to visit you at that specific area of your need. It's not, you know, the, weed, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood, he, she had one thing, one need. And in the midst of the thousands of people thronging around Jesus, she, the Lord met her at the specific point of her need. I also see in Acts chapter 10 verse 5 and 6, God spoke to Cornelius. He said, send men to Joppa. There is a man called Peter who is living in the house of a Simon, of another Simon who is a tanner. And now the house of this Simon is by the sea. There are some people whose house is by the express. There are some people whose house is in the estate. But the house of this particular Simon, where Peter was, is by the sea. The Lord knows you. He knows your name. He knows your need. That's why I'm confident to tell you this morning that God's word has come over us and your situation and your name, your name is not forgotten. Your situation is not forgotten. Your pain cannot be forever. Your challenges cannot continue like this because they have an expiry date. Why? Because God knows your name. He knows your trouble. He knows your challenge and he's sending his reign upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's sending his reign upon your area of need in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, jump on your feet and begin to declare this word of the Lord that the Lord will visit you at your specific area of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray this morning. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray that the Lord will visit you at your specific area of need. He knows your name. He knows what you're going through. Tell him, Lord, you know my name. You know what I'm going through. You know the troubles that is affecting me. You know the troubles that is challenging me. You have spoken your word that 10 men will come holding my skirt to behold your miracle upon my life. I'm believing you and I'm trusting in you and I ask that you rain your blessings upon me. Rain upon my situation. Rain upon my life. Rain upon our church. In the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray this morning. Ask the Lord to rain his miracles upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. At your specific area of need. In the name of Jesus. 
Recapo zanta lebregedosa. Recapa zagata yaga lebregedo. Recapo secataria capa. Ragaba zete lebregedosa. Lekete lebregede. Regabo zete lebregede. E la kazata ta ragaba. La kate yega lebregedosa. E makazota rigaba. E la kazende regabo sheta lebregedosa. Father, rain your showers of blessing upon our church in the name of Jesus. Let there be an accomplishment of your word. Let there be an accomplishment of, of your word in the name of Jesus. Recapo Santa Lebregedosa. Regabo Zete Lebregede. E Kazanta Yaga Leregebo Sufiria Kapa. Maragabo Zekata Lebregedosa. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that the Lord will purge you. Purge you of every distraction that can affect the showers of God's blessing in the name of Jesus. God. Brethren, characters are distractions. There can be characters that God needs to purge you of. God needs to purge some of us of some attitudes and characters for us to experience his blessing and miracle. Begin to pray this morning in the name of Jesus that the Lord will purge us of everything that is distracting us from following him, from being faithful, from demonstrating unwavering faith in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray that God will separate you from every distraction. He will severe you from every distraction in the name of Jesus. Recapo Santa Lebregadosa. Regebo zete libregedosa, le regebo shete libregada, rakapa zagata libregedosa, le regebo zente ti brakapa zande le regebo, rekapo zata la prokopo segata, e mazanta le regabo shatariba, rakopa zeta te le regebo zegata, e mazanta ragabo zete libregedosa, a rakapa yagata libregedosa, in the name of Jesus, pray that the Lord will break up your fallow ground, in the name of Jesus, everything that does easily beset you everything that has exalted itself upon your life above the name of the Lord. Pray that the Lord will severe them in your life. Every influence, external influence over your life that is higher than the influence of God. Pray that the Lord will severe those influences in the name of Jesus. Pray that the Lord will severe every influence that is undermining the influence of God on your life in the name of Jesus. Recapo Santa Lebregadoza. Reque